morning everyone. So our time is coming to an end here in the Algarve, just our last few days now. And we decided to go on one more little trip with my parents to make the most of it to a place called Faro, which is actually where the main airport is here in the Algarve. And we thought it'd be nice to just go on one more trip with them at least while we're here. And over there, we're gonna be staying at a nice place on the beach, I think. So yeah, that should be good. And Faro is about an hour from here in Portimao. So yeah, we're just finishing getting ready and then we'll be heading there and I'll show you around Faro. So we've arrived at the spot that we're going to be staying at. This is called Ilha de Faro and we're staying at this place here, Golden Beach Guest House. So this place that we're staying is $60 a night. We're just spending one night here and that includes breakfast as well. And it's a great location because it's right on the beach. I'll show you soon. And the room is also, yeah, really nice. I like that picture here. Yeah. The iconic beaches of the Algarve with the orange rocks. Then our view is of the road, but you can see here there is the lagoon. So we just crossed that bridge there because we're kind of on an island. I think it joins to the mainland later on, but this part seems like an island anyway. And then through here we have the bathroom, nice big bathtub to have a warm bath later on. And that's about it. I'll show you outside now. We have the spot that we'll have breakfast in the morning, I guess. And then, yeah, look at this view. This was a Carol choice once again, right? Carol yeah. selection. So you even have the stairs there, you can walk right on the beach. Look how nice this is, Praia de Faro. Beautiful long beach. And you can even eat here in the morning yeah, if the so weather's maybe, nice. It's gonna be too cold. Yeah, in the morning probably too cold. Yeah, we have a, a rooftop as well. All right. Yeah, so this spot is pretty much just one road, that's all, with uh, yeah buildings on each side. I guess in the summer they have a, a pool or something. Oh, they have like a mini bar and stuff here, right? Yeah. Deck chairs as well. Wanna get some sunbathing in. Now you get an even nicer view from up here. Yeah, very nice. 360 views. <laughs> yeah, pretty much 360 views. So we're gonna head on a walk on the beach now, but before we do, I just wanna say a big thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video and helping to support our travels. Surfshark are a VPN provider. As we are digital nomads, it's important that we keep a secure private connection anywhere in the world, keeping our data and information safe from hackers, which is becoming a bigger and bigger issue. It also allows us to bypass censorship. So in certain countries, some sites are blocked and by using Surfshark, we can unblock all sites and we're able to always access any website that we want. Another thing that we use it for is to unlock all of Netflix's 15 libraries. So Netflix has different films and series available in different countries and by using Surfshark we're able to access all of them. Surfshark also allows unlimited devices on one account so you can connect all your devices, laptops, cell phones to it just using one account. In the description of the video, there is a link with the code jumping places that will give you 83% off and three months for free. And they also have a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you decide you don't want to use it, you haven't spent any money.
at the end of the road there's this really nice boardwalk here the road ends and the only way to get past is by walking and right now we're not on the beach side this is actually the lagoon side here for Mars it's called super peaceful and quiet around here so you can see the little fishing boats here and over there is like the main city center of Faro where we'll be heading later on check out that place too but a really nice place to walk nobody really around at all So you probably saw that guy on his scooter people actually live down here and since there's no road i guess this is the only way they can get in on a scooter or a bike of course no cars but there's these little houses spread out everywhere these families must be like fishermen or something to live out here i bet this is their boat but check out this house here <laughs> all on its own imagine living out here <laughs> yeah it's funny because they don't have like a proper road yeah that's um, what i was just saying that guy that yeah. passed on the scooter so all these people that live here they have to come to their houses with just a scooter or something yeah a bike. <laughs> it's a funny and different thing yeah it just goes on and on so there's just these little houses everywhere So that was the end of the boardwalk back there. So I guess we've got to get on the beach now. I think this part does end though. I think it turns into the, the lagoon, the water. So yeah, we might try and walk to the edge. There's some surfers on this part as well. There were zero waves where we were staying, but yeah, there's a bunch out there. Get some more waves over here. So we reached the far corner now. Didn't take too long walking on the on the sand. So the tide's gone down a bit, so I don't think this would usually be here, this part. And if you look on the other side, that's a separate beach. So this is where the water enters into the lagoon. Not even sure what that one is called over there. I can probably ride it down. Really is cool around here though. Completely empty. It'd be interesting to see how busy this place gets in a normal summer. Maybe this part, because we've walked so far, it's still kind of empty, I'm not sure, but I think the, the other part where the hotel is would be packed. Yeah, I'd love to come to a lot of these places in the summer. Now we're in January, obviously, like deep in the, the winter, but the weather's still really nice. If you stayed the whole day out in this, you still get sunburned easily. When I did the surf lessons, just two hours, I still get sunburned and that was like complete winter and cold still, but the, the sun is strong over here.
So we're now at the old historic center of Faro. So just like Lagos, this has like a wall going around the old town, but I think this one is pretty much complete. It hasn't really been damaged that much. And from what I read, I think the Romans originally built it and then the Moors further developed it and the Portuguese. So they all kind of built on top of each other, like a lot of the historical places here in the Algarve. So we're just gonna go on a walk along the outside. Got a really nice walkway here. And it's right on the train track. I think you can even get a train here from Portimao if you wanted to. So that'd be pretty cool with this view along the coast. Seem to have some nice cafes or restaurants up there as well. You want to eat at a place with a good view inside the town? And this is the original wall? Yeah, it is, right? Yeah. I wonder which parts are Roman or Moorish or Portuguese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hard to tell. what that noise was. Oh, yeah. Here we go, the train. This part here is the Faro Marina and we actually just saw that they have boat tours here to the islands that are nearby on the Hia Formosa. Even the one that we went to, Ilha do Faro, you can go from here. It's a bit more expensive, we went from Olion last time, but yeah, you can do the tours here as well. really nice around here we just walked through this square and that seems to be the name there Praça de Francisco Gomes somebody that lived from 1739 to 1816 and here is one of the entrances to the old city so we're just gonna go through the arch right now I got some cool azulejo thing here the tiles love seeing these patterns everywhere on the buildings so here on the entrance check out these huge bird nests my dad said those kind of birds are stocks massive birds but yeah there's uh, four of them there you see them on the rooftops loads of places in uh, the Algarve yeah so this one is called Arco da Vila the Arabic door presents at the top a horseshoe arch, characteristic of Islamic architecture. At the time, this was an elbow-shaped entrance used by those who arrived by sea. buildings all look pretty impressive here I think a lot of these are from the 18th century by the look of it and everything here is these cobbled streets so this part up here is the the main square so we've got a really nice church here and then this is the city hall check that out for a cool looking building got nice orange trees everywhere around here as well 
yeah, the whole place is covered in orange trees. So we decided to enter the Faro Cathedral. It's actually the first one we've entered in the Algarve because the majority are closed, but this one is open and it was three euros 50 per person. So inside it's really huge, check this out. Ah, there goes the bells. So all the way around it looks really nice. Even in here you have the azulejos on the walls, the tiles, the music. Yeah, look at all these tiles there. So on this paper they gave us, it says from the Arab era, there is the memory of the Visigothic Santa Maria of Osonaba. In 1251, two years after the Christian reconquest, there is a first refurbishing campaign, followed by another one in 1321, during the reign of King Dinis. During the 15th century, the building was redesigned, dating from this time the medieval elements that still exist. Bones Chapel dates from 1653 to 1664, which was adapted uh, into a burial ground of the uh, poor people. That's what it says. Oh, there's actually skulls, right? Yeah. Wow. wow. It's a, a weird thing. Yeah, it is weird. A lot of the skulls are missing, but yeah, some of them are still there, like broken. Yeah, and bones. The Bizarre. Are bones. Oh, it's all bones. Yeah, all bones. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like pieces of, I don't know, like legs and arms or something. <laughs> Tired? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're heading up the, the tower now. I've got some little views here. <laughs> really small staircase here. Wow, that was beautiful. Some exercise. Oh, wow. Look at this for a view. Definitely worth coming up here. Look at this view. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, look at that uh, sitting area there. Oh uh, yeah, on that place. Yeah, I wonder if that's like that's a restaurant. A like a cafe. Ice cream. Oh, ice cream place. <laughs> yeah, here you got all the, the bells. <laughs> Loads of bells up here. Yeah, so that was the city hall that we saw before. You got the marina back there. We came from that side, the arch over there. And then on this side too, got the nice views of here for Marza. So Faro is kind of overlooked, I think, by tourists that come here because they're pretty much just coming for the beaches, right? But yeah, if you have time and you want to do something different to just beaches, great place to travel to, I think, especially if you like history. Probably if you're not interested in historic stuff, you won't really find this part interesting. But yeah, if you do, and if you like the cool architecture like us, you'll enjoy some hours here. that there's so many abandoned buildings yeah. though. Yeah. I wonder why. Well, it's like anything else, the economy has a nosedive. Yeah, literally everything around here looks abandoned. Even this building. Look at this for a nice house. I'm not sure if it's a hotel or something. 
beautiful garden though. Yeah, it is a very weird place because it looks like it should be a pretty popular like tourist attraction with all the nice historic buildings and stuff, but it's just all abandoned. Loads of buildings just seem broken and run down. Yeah, really weird. So we stopped at this nice uh, Italian cafe spot here, Amore Mio, I think it's called, outside on this nice square. And it's a really good deal. So for nine euros, you can have the main plate, which I'm probably gonna get a margarita pizza, and then a drink, a coffee, and then a soup or a salad or a dessert. So all that for nine euros, pretty good. Perfect spot. <laughs> so we've come back just in time for the sunset on the beach. Another good thing about staying on this beach here, you get the sunsets every single day pretty much. Still people surfing around here as well. Look this part the ducks. at the ducks. <laughs> hey, here we go. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, you got nice fur. <laughs> How's the other one? <laughs> yeah. Where's the other dog? <laughs> he doesn't care. <laughs> he doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> for the sunset it was quite a nice one really like this beach though super laid back and peaceful it's kind of like Ilia G Farol right yeah it's similar very long beach yeah just seems to go on forever and ever so I wouldn't mind spending longer here a few days longer maybe we'll do that when we come back to the Algarve spend a few days here I think it'll be a great place to stay so if you like this video, just drop a like, as always, to help support us. Subscribe to let's see more videos like this. Follow us on Instagram, and we'll see you around.